At the beginning of summer, I invited you and the council to engage in a spiritual practice of your choice. In times like we find ourselves now, times of unknown and transitions, it is important that we take intentional time to connect with God, the eternal, our source of life and hope. Many of you know that one of my spiritual practices is photography. And what you are about to see is some fruit from this spiritual practice that I experienced recently. With God's help, I pray it draws us a little closer to God and one another. It was an eerie and in many ways an indescribable hike that was filled with death and new life. The evidence of the power of fire surrounded me as I headed up the Fern Lake Trail in Rocky Mountain National Park. This was a trail that I had never been on before, and so I didn't have any previous experience to give me a reference to the changes the recent fires had had in that area. But it didn't take long to realize that this area was completely transformed by the power of fire. At the beginning, I was left with questions of why the devastation of the fires was so different in different places. It wasn't until later that I learned I was walking through two different and combined burn scars, fires from 2012 and 2020, just eight months earlier. As I climbed higher, I reached an area where there was increasing devastation. I found my boots and legs being covered with the dark black dust of dirt and ash. Then I turned a corner and in front of me was the aftermath of an inferno that left nothing in its path except for a black and white image of what seemed to be total annihilation, destruction, and death. There was nothing alive, and that image will stay with me forever. Eight months after the East Troublesome Fire had raged through this area, standing in that place at that time, the fire took my breath away and left me silent and paralyzed. In this area, the fires burned with such intensity that I saw evidence of tree trunks and boulders that had exploded, leaving behind only remnants of what used to be. I tried to imagine the sound that this fire, this inferno, must have created. I've heard some firefighters say it sounds like a loud, rushing wind. Huh. Take a look at Acts chapter 2, verse 2, and see if this sounds familiar. And suddenly, from heaven, there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them. Eight months later, I could still feel that life-altering and even terrifying moment. Life here is changed forever. Near Fern Lake, a group of women met me on their way back down the trail. The first greeted me with a face that was blank and these words, Isn't it so sad? She was right. It was sad. I grieved the loss of life that I could only imagine had once inhabited this area. I would never experience the life that once filled that space in the same way it was at its peak of life, just eight months before. It seemed as though fire had left 
only evidence of death and devastation and it was covering my boots my legs and my spirit yes i was sad then something caught my attention standing in the desolation of ash and death standing in my grief and sadness the faintest glimmer of life whispered into my sight and my spirit about fifteen to twenty yards from me amongst the background of ash and what seemed to be total annihilation of life inches from the ground at the base of a ter totally burned out remnants of trees shadows of death there in that place of death new life emerged i hadn't seen it earlier but now for some reason that also leaves me speechless and still i witnessed and received new life in the form of a single solitary ten inch high tiny yellow flower new life stands defiantly against the ash of death and proclaims to me and all who need it new life wins the death grief and sadness that i was experiencing pointed to my own sin 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 that put me at the center of the forest me at the center of the universe me at the center of life and proclaimed how sad for me that i won't experience the life that i wished i could have seen in this place sin that separated me from our god that is the source of life new life and this sin my sin was wiped clean by a gift that i do not deserve standing in the ash of my sin new life burst in as a gift now i read paul's words again do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into christ jesus were baptized into his death therefore we have been buried with him by baptism into death so that just as christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the father so we too might walk in newness of life for if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. Siblings in Christ, resurrection life is new life, and it is ours as a gift through our baptism into Christ's death and resurrection new life is promised to us even as we stand in the ash of our sin new life is promised even when we see only annihilation and death new life may be experienced only as the slightest of glimpses out of the corner of our eye or out of the corner of a sibling in christ's eye as I hiked back down the trail through the places of soot, dirt, and ash, I could hear the sound of Fern Creek and the Big Thompson River flowing, seemingly defiant of the effects left by the fires. And near the waters, I was greeted with more 
and more life that burst from the ash and soil with colors that left a smile on my face that returns every time I recall those images, kind of like a promise. And to leave you with one more thing to ponder, the words of John the Baptist, I baptized you with water, but one who is more powerful than I, one I am unworthy to untie his dirty, ash-covered sandals, he will baptize you with fire and the Spirit. He's right, you know. It's a promise.